me casa es su casa, you better watch who you letting up in your house, honey. Because I'm telling you, on this episode, the Hamburglar and Grimace about drove me stone cold crazy. And Simone almost fell right into the same trap. And I'm like, come on through, cookie. I want to pull my soapbox. That's basically it. Let's talk about drag and all its forms. What? Okay. <laughs> hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for Married to Medicine, Season 6, Episode 13. Um, and here we go again, Bravo Andy. Do I have to cuss your ass out yet again? Because now, well, we done went from Sunday to Saturday. Now we're going back to Friday. Ridiculous. Like, what's next? We got the battle on DVD. The hell is you doing, Bravo Andy? Bitch. What are you really giving? A mess. This is ridiculous. All this bouncing around back and forth. And it's not like they don't actually have the viewership that they actually need not to be bounced around like this. This is crazy. What are you trying to do? Like, I don't get it. I really don't get it. I just think it's absolutely ridiculous. And I know there's quite a few shows on Bravo that I wouldn't mind seeing bounced around. I'm just saying. Anyway, let's get into this. Uh, Simone. This whole episode, we basically went through the whole transition of Cecil's actually moving back into the house with Simone. Everybody's rejoining back together. Okay, no problem. And then they decided to have a party. I said, oh, no, not a useless party. Now, the, the difference is y'all can afford it. But again, a useless party, just some shit that you just made up. We're moving back in together. Let's have a because yeah, it ain't no, like the home housewarming shit. Y'all have been together 900 years. But, you know, whatever. It's cool. They wanted to bring everybody together to celebrate them coming back. And then once they actually got back together, we'll talk about that when we get there. But, yeah, I, uh, again, a little useless party, but whatever. Another reason to film, so why not? Um, Heavenly meet, meets up with Quad, and they basically end up talking a little bit about the uh, gift giving ceremony when they were in Antigua. And um, Quad was telling Heavenly how she really appreciated the bracelet. It's a beautiful bracelet. It really is a beautiful bracelet. She's telling her how she really appreciated it and appreciated where it came from and what it meant. So I was like, I was here for that. I was totally here for that. And Heavenly threw right in there. She was uh, surprised that no one else had actually stepped up to do that. Exactly. Especially not the Hamburglar who actually gave the trip. But then later on, we're going to kind of understand why she didn't try to do anything to comfort Quad. We'll see. Y'all just keep on watching, honey. I'm going to get to her goddamn raggedy ass. Anyway, moving on. Um, Quad did express how she felt a little bit uh, dropped, you know, from her former close friends, i.e. Simone and Toya. You know, it's like these are the two throwing the daggers at her, but they were the ones that were basically the closest to her at one point, but it was interesting. Toya and Eugene, they're uh, still going through different things. They're having a nice house built. Um, they have over extended an area for the closet and they found that they really need part of that closet. You know, our toy was one of that two floor closet. They need part of that for the air conditioning and the furnace and that kind of stuff. And she's just pissed and she just didn't want to see anything. She just was in her mode. You know how she does. I was like, get that bitch off of this television. Girl, listen. 
You're not going to have the closet over there, bitch, because the motherfucking air conditioner is going to be sitting over there. Now, what do you want? Do you want a bunch of closet space or you want to be a hot bitch? Now, which is it? And I know good and well Grimace's fat ass ain't get ready to uh, go for the hot shit. So, just shut up. It is what it is. Then they're talking about a wine cellar. And stuff. I said, Chuck, get them off of here. Get them off of here. Because who even cares, really? That's the last thing she needs is another bottle of wine with her ass. It's the last thing you need is another bottle of wine. I'm about sick of seeing you drinking out your bracelet, drinking out your purse. Girl, bye. Get, anyway, moving the fuck on. Y'all can tell I'm very irritated with Toy. I'm ve I am very irritated with Toy. I have been all season, but this episode itself just took me over the side. I am so irritated with Toya. Just fucking ridiculous. Fucking ridiculous. I don't know how nobody fuck with you. I don't. I, I don't even see how they child and I'm bad like that with Mariah because I could I couldn't fuck with Mariah and I definitely couldn't fuck with Toya either. Neither one of you. I couldn't walk to the corner store with you two bitches. Y'all are ridiculous. Both of you. Anyway, moving on. So Jackie decided to do this whole dinner for Curtis thing. You talking about some shit that I don't need to see? I don't need to see Jackie doing a goddamn thing with Curtis. Do you understand me? But, you know, come on, Jackie. It's, it's You say you want him. We say, okay, all right, girl. But he... Anyway. It's this whole King for a Day thing. She got the little cape for him and the crown and all this and Jackie walking her ass around with this badass motherfucking pair of shoes on and this nude um it was a flesh tone bodysuit bitch look good she was giving him what it child Jackie rolled through the kitchen and was given as we proceed for me to give you what you motherfucking need I said come on Jackie with that now Jackie can't cook Jackie's ass can't cook, don't know how shit work up in the kitchen. Jackie, now this is the shit you need to be concentrating on. Go and stop fucking around with Curtis and his old, he was giving me creepy old motherfucking man. You know, he's all like, ooh, this gonna be fun. I said, mm, mm. It ain't gonna be no fun. Fuck you ain't laying me down with no goddamn dress socks on if you don't get your old ass out of here. But he was giving me all that type of tea. I was like, ugh, Jackie, okay. But, girl, you need to concentrate more on learning how to work the stove, bitch. Well, if it's just 350, just, it'll just have to be on 350. Bitch, learn how to work the stove. I know you pay damn good money for the stove. Learn how to work it. Try opening the book that came with it. And if you can't find the book, go on your phone and Google what type of stove you got, Jackie, and learn how to work the motherfucking stove. You clowning now. Just ridiculous. She ain't know what she was doing. Heavenly and Simone, and you, Simone don't know how to cook me control. Heavenly was over there getting shit together. I said, y'all, this is a mess. It's a nightmare in that damn kitchen. Um, Anyhow, she did all that. Like I said, Curtis was giving me creepy old man, and I was giving, oh, I don't want to see you in your sweat socks. I didn't get, not sweat socks, but your dress socks. I didn't get on out of here. Moving on. Heavily went and seen that counselor. He's another one I don't want to see. I'm sick of that, too. So I'll be glad when she gets through all this. But she talked to him about everything that went on in Antigua, and she he did like this kind of meditating type of exercise with her. And it was it was really um on the Eon Levan's um Eon Levan's and shit and you know talk to little Kim and and you know tell your younger self you know everything gonna be all right yeah okay all of that big uh big thing she figured out that all of her anger and animosity that she fires at Mariah she feels as though it's really displaced anger that it really isn't anger against Mariah it's really anger toward her sister. And I call bullshit. I call bullshit. Now, you could do whatever you want to try to make yourself look good on this show, Heavenly, and uh, stretch out the storyline or whatever. But um, 
the shit that goes on with you and Mariah has to do with Mariah, period. She's a fucking bitch, and she does bitch-like shit, and that's what brings on all the shit. It is what it is, but they could write it up in there any way they want. Because some of that shit that she does, it's amazing that she comes out without having her motherfucking scalp torn out. So, I don't know. I'm sure there is some issues with you and your sister, but everything that goes on with you and Mariah, don't put all that shit on your sister. Because that, mm -mm, no. Most of that blame, 98% of the blame for the shit that goes on with you and Mariah belongs to somebody's sister. Lake sister. That's whose sister, that motherfucker Mariah. Mariah's a piece of work. She's a piece of work unless you want to come forward and tell us that your sister accused Damon of cheating and all this other shit and runs around and says that you stink under your arms and your house is funky and all of that. Do your sister do all that? Because you ain't said all that. That your sister did all that. I'd be interested to know. Did sister do all this or was it Lake's sister that did all this? But whatever. They keep bouncing y'all from Friday to Saturday. I guess you got to do whatever they tell you to do. Anyway, child, moving on. Because, I, 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 again, that whole thing with him, I told you I was tired of seeing Jewel Tanker's ass up over here with her bullshit. And I'm sick of this, um, this blockhead. I always feel like somebody's watching me type of fella that's here doing discounts. He, I don't know. He really gives me that, honey. I always feel like that's what he gives me, honey. Get, get your ass out of here. I, I don't trust that he says. He does give me more tish and tease. But anyway, moving on. So she said it's time for her to really address it. But I said, oh, so she's going to do some counsel with her sister. And then it turns around, she says she's going to apologize to Mariah. I said, oh, well, good luck with that. And I guess I'll be standing here waiting for when she throws this shit back in your face, huh? Because she's going to get you. She's going to get you. She's going to throw it right back in your face. And before you know before you know it, you're going to be calling Lucy a bitch or something again. So, you know, whatever, girl. I, we'll be here watching because I don't think that's going to go well. Because, I, again, I call bullshit. But, okay, moving on. Let's go to uh, me Casa say she called whatever. Me... <laughs> Damn, I can't even get it out, child. The party over at goddamn Simone's joint, honey. Let's go there. Everything's cute. Everybody shows up. Contessa shows up. Bitch is looking lovely. Lovely. When I tell you Contessa was spray painted into this electric blue dress, I said, Contessa, bitch. Yes. Yes, Contessa. Looks so good. She looks so good, so refreshed. She just looks good. And I was, I was living for it. And then she turned around. And one of my hugest pet peeves, I got that black bra was showing. I was like, Contessa, your titties are not even big enough for you to have even worried about wearing that bra. You could have just not even worn that bra and just didn't even worry about it. And they knew. Girl, so I know they sitting up lovely, honey. You didn't even have to wear that bra. That is one of my biggest pet peeves. I can't stand a bra showing in the back of something, and especially when it's not the exact same color. If it was an electric blue bra, no, I would have let you make it. I would have still said something. But, girl, from the front, bitch, you were flawless. Then And the dress had the one little leg on. I said, come on, Contessa. All but the damn bra. It was it was it was fabulous. Fabulous girl, you did it. But that, that bra, I couldn't mess with that bra. Um Toya still shading in the confessional. Oh yeah, me and um Contessa, we hugging and we really trying. I said, Toya, do you ever stop? Do you ever stop? You you just don't even know how to turn the shit off. You just old shady bitch. Run around there looking like one of the goddamn fry guys. Just ridiculous. I, I just can't with her. And why was Toya so overdressed? She had this like black uh, slut wear maxi dress on. And I'm like, where are you going? Everybody's in like denim. And you're like, over here looking like you get ready to try to do a spread for uh, Fredericks of Hollywood. Girl, sit down. Just sit down. Um, and when they got to eating baby Curtis, 
Now, I, I I was saying to myself when the little thing, the little scene was done over Jackie's house, and Curtis was making a plate, and Curtis was piling. Well, Jackie was doing Curtis's plate over her house, and she had put green beans on his plate. Then she was actually taking green beans off the plate. I said, Jackie, are you counting the beans on the plate, Jackie? She had food on the plate, was taking food off the plate. And I looked at that little tiny plate of food, this great big old man. I said, bro, sorry, Jackie. But I just said I wasn't going to mention it. And then when I seen them make that plate over at Simone's party, I said, he's hungry. That plate was piled up so goddamn high. And they going to say, goddamn. I said, girl. I said, okay. Don't let me find out, Curtis, that you're the plate packing type, honey. You know, I can't stand that trifling shit. And I'm not into people who come over to other people's house and try to eat up the whole goddamn spread either. Jackie, feed your husband before you leave home. Don't have him come to another party and pile a plate like that again. You understand me? It's ridiculous and it doesn't look good. It looks like your man's hungry. Anyway, moving on. So they got a boom boom room downstairs at uh, Simone's house. It was real cute. All the guys went downstairs. They had two female bartenders down there. Nobody really knew it, except for Simone. So, it got real quiet. Simone started the shit. She sends Contessa and Heavenly downstairs. I said, go see what they're doing. They get down there. Heavenly will say, oh, uh-uh, daddy. What the hell is you doing over here? He was all up in the bar, all in the girls. I said, child, Lord have mercy. So, she's like, uh-uh, we're going to be leaving. But it was just real lighthearted, and it was funny. It was really funny. Um, while they were down there talking before Contessa and uh, Heavenly came down, I wanted to smack Eugene's face like 50 times, just over and over again. He is so motherfucking team Greg. I said, boy, you if I didn't know better, I would swear that Greg had his dick in you at some point or another. The way you are just, you are team Greg to the point where it is just too fucking merch. Like, Really? Just on and on and on. And I miss Greg. I miss Greg. I miss Greg. You miss Greg more than quite and miss Greg when they was married and happy. The fuck is really going on? You got something you want to say, Grimace? Should Quad have been side eyeing you all this time, bitch? Something we missing out on? You too much Team Greg for me. I said, girl, this is giving me a little too merch. Anyway, I'm being smart, smart and shady, y'all. Yes, I am. But um, I am. I'm just being sarcastic, child. And y'all, I don't know nothing about, because y'all take this shit and run with it. I know nothing about uh, Dr. Gregory and his sexuality other than he's married to Quad, and I'm good with that. So as far as I know, Dr. Gregory is heterosexual. I don't know what the fuck is going on with Grimace. Anyway, moving on. Too much motherfucking team Greg for me. But anyhow, either had it in you or you wanted it in you. Anyway, let me stop. Anyway, um, you know, you spend a lot of time uh, masturbating too, child. Greg, you better check it out, honey. Check him out, honey. You, 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 child. Anyway, and moving on. Okay, so upstairs. While Grimace is down there doing all of that carrying on, his fry guy wife is upstairs, and she decides to say to the crowd, and she ain't asked them, she fucking told them. You know, I, I, we missed a girl's trip this year. We need to go on a girl's trip. But, um, you know, moving forward, no more singles are going on, our, on, the, on the couple's trip anymore. Well, first of all, Toya, who the fuck are you to make the call on who in the fuck is going on the motherfucking couple's trip, bitch? You ain't nothing but a couple of bitches that I call you here on the motherfucking YT, bitch. You ain't in charge of nothing, bitch. You're not Della Reese. You're not motherfucking in charge of the girl's whore. You don't get to tell nobody who's going or who's not going. And baby, uh, Madam Q basically told her, she said, no, baby, listen, let me tell you something. I'll be on the girl's trip. 
I'll be on the couple's trip. And any other trips I want to go on. I said, come on, Claude, bitch. Come on through. You let that whore know. She don't make the rules. And she ain't in charge of you. She is not in charge of the girls, honey. Okay, Bravo Andy didn't fucking tell her she couldn't go on the group. I was just really done. And right in a, for a moment there, Simone was trying to be the other fry guy. And was over there like, yeah, well, I don't think I said Simone shut up. Shut up, bitch. Shut up, because you've been doing too much all season. You shut up, bitch. Shut up and shut up now. And once Quar started talking and laughing at her, Simone got out of it and left it alone. I said, oh, she didn't want that didn't want that smoke, I guess. She left it alone, but it was so ridiculous. And then all in that confessional with that shade, all it was pure shade. When they were saying, Quar said at some point, I, who said I won't be dating? I might actually be a couple by the time the couple shit come back around again. I said, no, that's right. God knows you got everything you need to get one, honey. Child don't take much to get a man, honey. The trick is getting one that you want to be bothered with. Catch that. Um, that fucking Toya had her to be up in that confessional throwing pure shade. Talking about, because they said, uh, whoever quad dates, uh, like I said, we're going to have to vet him, honey. Whoever he is, we got to approve of his ass. Whoever he, you know, whoever we're going to let you go date. It would be a funny. And honey, that damn Toya got up in that confessional was giving, it's going to be very hard to find somebody for quad. Why is it going to be hard, bitch? Didn't you find Eugene, bitch? If Eugene can find somebody and you can find somebody and y'all found each other with y'all two ridiculous backwards asses, then that means that there's hope for any and every motherfucking body. Toya, bitch. I didn't care for that at all. I, I just said, I didn't even know what it was based on. It couldn't be based on looks. It couldn't be based on uh, whether or not she's smart couldn't be based on whether or not she's pulled up. Because see, all those things I just mentioned, she has all those things on you, bitch. Smart, pulled up, and looks... What? what? Bye, Toya. You shady. You're very shady. And I don't know what happened, but I don't know where you are you and Quad were always better than this. I don't understand this for the life of me. I've been all season, didn't understand what's going on with Simone. I don't know what you hoes is on. Y'all are on some complete fuck shit. There is some real hateration going on around here. I think we're going to have to bring Mary J. Blige in to sing a little bit for the reunion or something. Because y'all are on some real live fuck shit. Y'all really are. I don't get it. What did the girl do? What did she do? And yes, I guess this whole this this whole review I I've, I've been taking up for quad. I know y'all going to try to drag me for it. It is what it is. It's just out there. What did she do to Toya? What did she do to Simone? Now we're not talking about Mariah. You know, y'all get into that thing y'all say I hate Mariah and all of that shit. Now I really don't like her very much. But I mean, with these two like seriously I would have her back because, one, I do like her. I don't really care for Toya, and I never have. Y'all know that. I always really like Simone. But this season, I don't know what the fuck's going on with Simone. I really don't. And I truly don't know what's going on with Toya. I really thought Toya and Quart were better than this. This is so crazy to me. But then again, you brought Contessa to the show as a friend of yours. And the way you go with Contessa... Fuck you, Toya. That's all I that's all I got for you. Girl, fuck you. You're the hamburglar and you're a part-time fry guy. Bitch, I ain't got no use for you. And Grimace can go too. I'm sick of y'all two backwards ass motherfuckers. Y'all shady as hell. And y'all are completely team Greg. I don't know what's going on, but God bless y'all, honey. Y'all go. Y'all can go now. Just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Makes no sense at all. So then they go. To um, the guys go golfing. And who shows up? Dr. Gregory. And they begin talking this whole story. 
First, they were laughing at Aiden and saying, Aiden's not going to be here. It's a good thing because, you know, Aiden's a tattletale. Anything that goes on, anything we eat, drink, whatever, Aiden tells Mariah. He does. He's a henpeck freak. He really does. Little henpeck freak, honey, that can't dance. Ain't nobody interested in Aiden. And I wouldn't want to go nowhere with Aiden either. Talking ass motherfucker. But anyway, going on. And they and they, they like Aiden, but they again, they be tired of him telling on their motherfucking ass. They can't do shit. They can't fart in peace with Aiden's around. He's going to tell that motherfucking Mariah. Anyway, Eugene starts again with his whole Team Greg thing. And then Gregory starts. You know, Gregory, Gregory's like my aunt. He'll talk that shit anytime somebody's willing to listen. So anytime he finds a crowd of people that are willing to listen to the woe is me and Quad did me so wrong, you know, he, he, takes and runs at the, the opportunity. And he went on and on about this sleep number bed. And she took my bed and I... all fear and love and war. And you running around the town with a hot dick. Do you really believe that she was going to leave her bed there for you to be fucking bitches in? Not at all. The bed's coming with me. And there's obviously a reason why you couldn't get it back. Didn't pay for it. Don't have the receipts. Because if you paid for it and you had the receipts and she moved it, you would send the police to tell the police, tell that bitch to send me my shit. And the police would have went and made her take the bed back and she would have had to pay to have it brought back. So what's really going on? What part of the story aren't you telling? I'll ask again. Don't have the receipts. Didn't pay for it, Dr. Gregory. If you didn't pay for it and you don't have the receipts, it ain't your motherfucking bed. Okay? Because that's what you were leading us to believe that you bought the bed and it was this, that thing, and the other. Because, you know, you lead us to believe that you bought everything. Because you've been taking care of her since you met her and all that old bullshit. There's some lies being told. And honest to goodness, if it was really that deep about you and your sleep never bed, because they are expensive as a motherfucker. And you was that broke up about it and mad as you are and as petty as you are. See, because that's what they're throwing out, that quad is petty. Yeah, it was petty. But who is any pettier on the show than Gregory? Gregory is pettier than a motherfucker. You are so petty to the point that you would have had her served and had your bed removed from her premises. But I believe it wasn't your bed, per se. If you have something different that you want to share, I'll wait. God knows. We know you'll come jump up on the internet, baby, and get the interview and the carry it on. Patty. Who's Patty? Dr. Gregory. That's who's Patty, honey. A mess. And also the Hamburglar, the Fry Guys, and the motherfucking Grimace are Patty. I'm sick of them. It is so evident that Eugene and Toya are completely Team Greg, honey. And um, shit, Quad, I wouldn't even want to go to nothing that them motherfuckers had nothing to do with. Fuck them, too. They're ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Toya, shut your mouth and go down there and hang some of your clothes on your motherfucking air conditioner, you dumbass. Anyway, moving on. This is it. This is all I have to say about this episode of... Uh, a garage girl called them love and hip-hop. That's how the fuck they acted lately. But um, Married to Medicine, I'll catch up with you guys someday next week. You know, I'll just use the DVR because I don't never know when the fuck this is coming on. You know, really? Bravo, Andy, bitch.